Hey, what's up, everybody? Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. In today's video, I want to talk about uh, the Silicon Bank, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, the run on the bank. And I, I think that this will be a very good teachable moment for, for all of us to understand how money works and how the media is also kind of making people get scared about placing their money in banks people get scared about investment people get scared thinking that money disappears when money doesn't disappear it just shifts and there was also another bank uh, called silvergate bank in uh, that also had went down uh, this one was not uh, mentioned too much in the news i think the reason why silicon valley bank was mentioned more because it's been around for a long time i think it's like 40 or i think 40 some years uh or more than that uh, i just know it was around a long time ago i didn't put that in my notes but they hold a lot of uh money from venture capitalists and let me tell you the difference between a venture bank and uh like our regular banks like jp morgan chase uh you know or the ones that you probably got your money in is that th their money is placed into the bank and it is not uh, invested the same way that you know that banks invest our money that's placed in our banks when we put our money in there they're loaning it out and they're getting a higher interest rate than what they're paying us which is really nothing unless you have a, uh, a special type of account or you have a CD in there, which they're paying very good rates right now. I just put one in there. And, um, but these banks, what they do is these venture banks are putting the money into these accounts and the companies that they're investing in is pulling the money out to pay payroll, to pay advertising, to pay, uh, you know, leases, that type of stuff. So it's not actually utilized in the same way. So the bank, Silicon Valley Bank, had to be very careful about what they did to be able to make money. And so what they would do is they would invest in very secure type investments because they don't want to put people's money at risk. And so what they did is they actually uh, put it into a, a mortgage-backed securities, which was paying a very low rate. And the reason why it was paying a very low rate is because before... The Fed started raising rates, which was what a couple of years ago or a year ago, is that the where they had the money parked was actually a very good uh, place to park some money, to park their money, and it was earning you know a good percentage. I mean, it was not a high percentage rate, but it was earning money. It was not a loss. Uh, but now that rates are up, uh, that uh, that return is not going to be, you know, worth anything if if people were doing what they're doing right now. So let's talk about what's happening right now. Is that the uh, come? And this is going to be a good uh, learning experience too. About there's someone on the other side that's making this whole thing react, and I'm pretty sure that on these individuals or companies or firms or actually making money on the other side and you'll you'll learn that as i explain it so basically silicon valley bank uh they, they're having a run on the bank where these venture funds or these companies are saying hey we need access we need our money we need to pay our bills we need to do whatever we want to make sure that our money is safe for when we need to use it and so there's a run on the bank for the money the bank has the money in a sense, it's invested. And what they tried to do is they tried to get secure invest, uh, secure other uh, firms to put money into the bank so they could pay out the money that was due. But in return, those companies had to wait on the sideline to get paid from the bonds that they had out there to be uh, paid if they're five year or 10 year, whatever. And right now, smart investors who are putting money out are like why would i do that 
to make that low percentage rate when I can put the same amount of money right now and at a minimum get 4% or 4.75% and, uh, and do it in a lot less period of time. Uh, my wife and I just put an investment in a CD and it's only a four month and you're getting 4% on a four month or you can get a 4.7% on a five month. Uh, they're paying huge percentages and why would you put it away for a year or five years or 10 years and get 1% or 2% when you, right now you can do it for a lower uh, uh, time frame and get more. So that's what they're up against is that no one was willing to give them the money to be the bridge for them to pay the people, the uh, businesses that was making a run on the bank. Now, no one was willing to get in line to do that. So what they're having to do right now is they're having to sell those bonds. So this gets into the flip side of who's making money. So if Silicon Bank has to pay its uh, depositors the money and the way that they have to do it is they have to sell the bonds that are out there, they're going to lose money when they sell those bonds. So who is going to make money when they sell those bonds? The, the uh, bond providers, when you sell it early, you're going to have to pay a fee. So you're going to, number one, lose when you pull out the money. So and there's, there's a certain percentage that you're going to have to pay. So to clarify, they have the money, the money is invested. But if they pull the money out, they're going to have to pay a fee on pulling that money out. So just to make it simple, say you put $10,000 into a, um, a bond and the bond is going to mature in five years. But they say for, if you take it out early, you're going to have to pay like a 10% fee or 15% fee. Uh, so you put your $10,000 in there and you're going to have to pay 10% if you take it out early. So that's where the dominoes start to fall. So they got billions of dollars uh, put into these different bonds. And so if they're going to have to take a 10% cut uh, by taking that out or 15%, you never know what they arrange. Maybe it's 20%. You never know what it's arranged. That problem right there is what's going to make an issue when they start to start paying out to people because they're actually losing 10, 15 or 20 percent on every bond that they have to sell. And you never know. It could even be worse. There's different types of packages that these companies uh, will get into. So who is making money on the flip side? You never know if a company uh, is on the flip side of those bonds to make them have to sell out on those bonds so they could utilize that money that they're making on that percentage to put into this higher rate. And there were several emails that went out from venture firms that said, we advise you to take your money out of this bank. That's what they said. Even though the bank was was paying out, uh, you know, on the bonds that were uh, on the accounts where people were asking for money, they were paying those people. People were paying them. They might have to pay them a little bit later. Uh, they were probably trying to see, you know, which bonds were going to, which ones were going to end up paying a lower fee on or probably trying to negotiate on those. But regardless, the word got out. And some of the uh, venture capital firms that had money in there were sending out emails to, to companies that they invested in. And they were saying, we advise you to get your money out of there. And that's what made the run on the bank. So with them having to the run on the bank, they're going to have to start cashing out more of the bonds that they had on hold, uh, that they had invested in, and that they're going to start losing more, per, more of the fees. So who is on the other side of those that are getting those fees? Because if they take the money out early, those uh, uh, bonds that were that they had invested in, they're going to get keep that fee that off of that money. They're going to give them their money back, but they're going to get to keep that fee. That's where that loss is. So who is on the other side of that making money? So there's, it's, it's like people think that money disappeared. The news make it look like the money is disappearing. 
when all it is, all that's happened is that the, the, the bonds that they're invested in is taking their fee. They're not getting the money back plus the uh, interest that they had made on that investment. They're not going to get it because they're calling that earlier than what was uh, negotiated when they signed for those bonds. So just so you understand, the money was there. If, if Let's just say this. If everyone said, okay, we're going to just sit and wait, and as we need money, we're going to take money as we need it. We're not going to try to take all of our money and move it to another bank. They would have had all of, everything would have been paid as normal. But because it was, you know, starting to ramp up more and more and more, it's, they started having an issue to where it was like, hey, we don't have the money in hand. We're going to start selling those bonds and that's going to be trouble because we're going to have to pay those percentages for cashing them in early. And there's an incentive for people who we used to be able to reach out to to uh, come in and, and kind of give us a bridge by giving us money. Uh, we're not going to be able to make that work right now because they can utilize that same cash right now and at minimum get 4% to 4 percent uh, seven five percent or even more depending on the amount of money that they invest in uh, that they invest in a in a CD or some other type of vehicle it's just paying too much for a lower period of time so it was just going to be hard for them to be able to make that up so I wanted to uh, make you aware of that so the lesson on this is that the money does not disappear and that you just need to pay attention in the way that, that you're investing your money and and people with a lot of money make mistakes also. So people with a lot of money make mistakes are no different than any of us. All you have to do is just pay attention to what you're doing. Look at your investments. Look at what you're going to invest in and educate yourself and you'll be able to make very good decisions. Uh, so if you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different, so you can see my eight-point validation process and my two-phase settlement process. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, your the number three scores.com. Grab your TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, credit reports, and all three scores, and it'll give you all of the information that you need to be able to repair your credit. If you have debt collectors coming after you, grab my three-pack of letters, the statute of limitations letter, debt validation letter, and cease and desist collection activities letter. The instructions are on that packet. I do ask for a donation. When you download those, it helps me monetize the channel but more important than that is that it can save you time money and frustration just think if you had a debt collector coming after you for a thousand dollars and you were able to utilize one of those three letters to stop them right in their tracks i think that it would be worth it thank you for your time please subscribe to the channel post your questions and comments this is stephen a williams president and founder of the credit repair shop.com